Dr. Jennifer, say your last name for me so I don't hack it up uh, again. It's Luca Relli. Luca Relli, okay. Hard C. I didn't do a very good <laughs> job of that. Uh, Dr. Luca Relli is the chair of the Interdisciplinary Health Sciences Department at Oakland University. Speaking of food, that's a mouthful, Dr. Luca Relli. What, what does that mean? What does all that mean? So we take a different approach to training health professionals where we recognize that you know, yes, we need people who understand the human body really, really well. So they take their anatomy, biology, physiology, chemistry, but we also know that humans are complex beings that function in society. So, you know, I can tell you all day to eat more fruits and vegetables because they are going to help prevent cancer, but you're still going to uh, choose the Pringles and the McDonald's instead because of the world that we live in. So you study the fact that I eat too much pizza. Do I, do, do I, I basically have that right? <laughs> you just want to recognize that, you know, we live in a really <laughs> complex world that uh, influences every single decision we make. So we can uh, make those decisions easier by environmental changes. Well, my team was kind enough to hand me a quote. Uh, you recently quoted in the Oakland Press. It said, our emergency food players may have stepped up from feeding 300 families defeating 3,000, but if each of them have to go to four or five different places, and we aren't helping to solve the current problem. Is, is that an accurate quote? And your thoughts, please. Yes. So what we saw when um, coronavirus hit is that, you know, one of the first things that families needed and were going to run out of very quickly was food. And so we saw a huge influx of people um, coming to the emergency food system, but each person was trying to, or I guess each organization was trying to serve more people instead of serving more food to the people that they were um, having to uh, help over this situation. So people were going to the school system to get kids for their, or meals for their kids, um, to the senior center to get meals for grandma and grandpa, to the food pantries. And at the end of the day, it still wasn't enough. And so we know that with all of these increased face-to-face -face interactions, you know, no matter how safe we're being, um, we're still increasing that risk of transmission in the community. Okay, I get it, because if they're, if they're having to go to more places, then that is, that is greater exposure. My notes say that Oakland University has uh, established a food distribution site. Is that part of your solution, and can you talk about that? That is. So one of the limits in the emergency food system was just the space that these organizations had. Um, they didn't have increased warehouse and packaging space to get volunteers in there uh, to meet this increased demand. And again, people were going to multiple locations. We said, if we could bring these groups together and combine all of the food that they have available in one location that's got a much larger footprint, we can serve more food to more families more safely. So we've turned the student center on campus basically into a food warehouse and packaging operations. It's really quite the site. So do people come there or is that more of a distribution operation you've set up at Oakland University? So it's more of a distribution operation. We have a series of volunteers who have signed up through the mycovidresponse.org website and each volunteer delivery driver takes four or five households worth of food and drops it off right on their front step. So they don't even have to leave their homes uh, to have their food needs met. So that's really important for people who don't have transportation, um, who are either positive or have been exposed and are in quarantine, or the seniors and immunocompromised individuals that are just gonna be at risk for really dire consequences if they were to catch this. You know, Dr. Licorelli, you, you what an amazing thing you're doing with that, with that degree that you have. This is beautiful work. And uh, and you're you're getting food to people. Then you're delivering it right to people. Um, mm -hmm. that, that's amazing. Do you need volunteers? How's all that going? I imagine you're not calling Uber to get the food on. How's that working? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we are relying on a lot of volunteers right now. So yes, there's always a need uh, for more volunteers, and anybody can sign up at mycovidresponse.org. And we also have a partnership with Gardner White where they are using their delivery trucks for some of our larger complexes. So we serve um, a low-income senior apartment complex that has 200 individual units. 
So for them, we pack all 200 boxes and bags of produce and milk and eggs uh, into the Gardner White truck. And then we have um, about eight volunteers meet them on site and deliver to all 200 individual apartments. So Ab absolutely amazing. Really, really heavily volunteer run um, at this time. No, it's really cool. Absolutely amazing. You know, we just keep hearing about business after business, uh, community after community, citizen after citizen, everybody pitching in. And, and, and that's why we're getting through this thing and hopefully flattening the curve and and uh, getting back to some kind of, of normal. Do you have any thoughts on that? We're all we're, we're going to talk a little bit later in the broadcast uh, about uh, how we transition back to whatever this new normal is going to be. Um, food's a part of it, but with your other expertise, any any advice for our uh, our policymakers? You know, I think that this has shown um, some of the inefficiencies and some of the vulnerabilities in our nonprofit systems and. I'm really hoping that the long-term outcome of this is going to be just a higher level of collaboration and coordination of services. You know, it's really um, cumbersome for people coming into this new position where they've never had to access social services before to have to call around to, you know, 20 different agencies that are doing similar things and still not meeting a client's entire needs. So if we can centralize that and just end up with a much more humanistic approach, I think it's going to be a beautiful outcome from this tragic situation. Well, that's a great point. And, you know, those organizations are all doing amazing work. Let's give them credit. They've stepped up where they saw a need. We have all, I mean, I could think of group after group after group doing great work, but I get it. And, you know, it's a management, it's a technology thing, it's a logistics kind of thing. So, you know, I'm really glad that you, you joined us today and that you're working on that. It's, you know, it, it, it's another great aspect to this entire uh, fiasco that we're all going through, and you're just making it better with your work. Dr. Jennifer Lucarelli, thank you so much for joining us, and, uh, and, and please say hello to everybody at Oakland University and give them our best. And, and uh, it's good to see that uh, you and the other folks at Oakland U are doing your can your, what you can to help out our, our county and our state and our region. Yeah, thank you so much for talking with us today. All right. Thank you very much. There you go, Tyler. Another amazing story.